Hi everyone, we are outside enjoying this fabulous day. I'm just getting ready to go and meet a client um, for lunch where we are going to be discussing back to school. So for over 15 million people, um, back to school is one month away. And I thought I would talk a little bit about my three boys having just finished uh, the last one. What we did to prepare for back to school, and this is for kids who are going to be going away and staying either in a dorm or their first place. And so I thought I would round up some of my favorite items for getting our kids ready for this special time in their lives. And although I'm an interior designer, I know most of you think that I'm gonna come from the angle of um, having a place done up and making sure it has a vibe or a style. But what's really important to me is not just that a place looks good, but that it functions well for the student. It is proven that a organized workspace um, allows you to think clearer. And I believe that your home and its um, how it functions is a big part of how your life feels and brings you joy and beauty and a little bit of luxury every day. So let's get into some of my favorite back to school items. So we're gonna start with the bed. This is where they spend the most amount of time while in their dorm. So for me, a mattress and the comfort uh, of my children's bed has always been paramount. I always try to buy them the best possible mattress. And I got them involved in that because everybody has their own idea of what comfort is to them. Some like softer, some like firmer. So the first place to start is the bed. Now, one of my favorite all time uh, beds is the uh, Malm from Ikea. And this is everybody's favorite and it's a classic for dorms and for back to school first apartments. Um, one of the reasons is obviously the price point. It is very inexpensive for the quality that you are getting. But one of the things that I love about it is if you imagine their, their dorm rooms, they are quite small. So the mom bed has the addition of drawers at the bottom for additional storage. Now, my boys had three different experiences. The first slept off campus in a townhouse where there were six bedrooms, six boys sharing the house. So really he spent all of his time in that room when he was at his place. My second son slept in a room about seven and a half by nine feet with a curtain. It was a uh, den space at a friend's condo. So we really had to pack a lot of punch into that small space. And then my youngest wound up having his own place. So although he had more space, we tried to make it as efficient as possible and to give as much storage as possible because they like to bring as much stuff as they can with them from home. So the mom bed is great because of those drawers. The next item would be the mattress. So a good mattress. Again, it doesn't have to be the same quality as what you have at home, but it should be the best you can afford. I also love to put a down filled mattress topper on my mattresses. This is usually about three or four inches and it sits on top of your mattress and it gives it that sort of cloud like feel when you get into bed, it just has you sort of melt into the mattress. Um, it's fabulous if you get an all season one, it works like a down comforter. You can get all season one that keeps you cool in the summer and then warmer in in the winter. And then on top of that, I actually like to put a cooling gel protector pad. So this does a couple of things. Again, not all places are going to be um, air conditioned. So if you're a hot sleeper, this cooling gel pad will help you regulate your temperature at night. The second thing that it does that I really, really like is a lot of time is going to be spent in that bed drinking and eating. If this is their dorm room, it's gonna be the most comfortable spot in the room so you can expect accidents to happen. A gel protector or a cooling gel protector will give them that protection in case a cup of coffee or a cold drink is spilled. Pillow. 
This is another important consideration. Again, I would have your child help pick the pillow. I am not a stomach sleeper, but I like a very flat pillow, um, which are usually um, what are recommended for stomach sleepers. So f you should know or ask your child what their sleeping position is and get them a pillow that is geared to that. Um, people don't realize the importance of pillows to our neck health and um, even our back health, really. Um, so I would get your child involved. And then again, if they are a hot sleeper or there is no air conditioning, consider a cooling gel pillow. We've left links for all the items we're talking about today below. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and let us know your thoughts on what you'd like to sleep, see in future videos. So the last item to consider for the bed is the duvet and a duvet cover and sheet set. So this one from Amazon I particularly like because it is ultra soft. It is uh, made out of a polyester that can be washed so it's easily to maintain and then I would consider if not a down filled duvet because again of spills and dry cleaning and all that I would get a down alternative here so that it can be thrown into the washing machine and dryer in case of mishaps. The next consideration should be the desk. Now, again, most of these dorm rooms are not going to be very large, so we need to pack as much storage in as possible. So I recommend getting a desk that has drawers. And think outside the box here. If a traditional desk size isn't going to work, I'm gonna link a couple of consoles that I've used in the past as desks. Now, while they don't have as much depth as a normal desk, they are a little bit longer, so you can spread your um, books and papers out. This is why again storage is so important. We've talked in the past about using the vertical space. I would highly suggest that you put shelves above the desk that can store um, books that are not being used at that particular moment but that are still in front of the child so that they don't forget them. And then with drawers so that all your pencils, all of your uh, erasers, rulers, everything that you need is at your fingertips without taking up valuable real estate on the desktop itself. A desk lamp. Now I'm actually going to leave the link to one of my favorite lamps for the nightstand but this can be used at the desk as well. Again real estate is a premium. They are small spaces typically. So if you can find items that have multiple functions, this is your best bet. One of my favorite lamps does just that. Not only can you plug in your iPad and your phone right into the lamp, but there is also an additional plug so that if you have to plug your laptop in, you can do that. And this all sits on either the desk or the nightstand and has multiple functions in the smallest amount of space. And then as I said, I love to layer shelving above the desk and even above the bed for that matter. In my first son's apartment, we did a uh, couple of rows of lac shelves right across the entire wall. This was a great place for him to store not just uh, personal items and items from home that brought a little bit of sentimentality for him, but he also stored some of his sweaters there, some of his books were kept there, um, and it was, again, right there where he could see everything. And then I wanna point out these fabulous under counter lights. Now these are typically used in a kitchen for under your kitchen counters, but these will really light up any area. So I would love to see these underneath the shelves. They act as a nightlight if those shelves are over the bed while creating ambience for the room. One of my favorite pieces that we used in one of our student condo projects are these lac shelves. Now these are fabulous. Again, we use them as you can see here to store the uh, students collection of running shoes, but they could again be used to store sweaters folded 
or books um, or a myriad of other things. And then as we've talked about, if you watched our other video on my favorite IKEA products, the Calyx shelving system. I love this one. So new is an undercarriage, um, which is basically a feet system or a, um, a system to raise this calyx system off the floor and it gives it a completely different look. So again, thinking outside the box, no one says that you have to have a nightstand by the bed. You could have a calyx system on either side. You could use our little under counter lights to light up each box. Again, bring some ambiance in the room, acts as a nightlight. And then these calyx shelves could be fitted with multiple ways. So IKEA offers doors, they offer drawers, they offer a shelf that divides the one cubby into two, as well as a shelf system that divides it into multiple sections, almost as a file system. They make endless amounts of baskets and boxes that fit into the calyx. One of the things that was um, a lifesaver for both my first and second who were sharing spaces is we kept all their toiletries in a basket or a box in their room that they could easily carry to the bathroom every morning and every night. Um, and this way they didn't have to worry about fighting with roommates about who's using my products and where did my products go. So the more you can utilize boxes and baskets, the better and really just brings organization again to their lives. And one of the things that I really live by to um, provide me with that luxurious lifestyle I keep talking about is that there's a place for everything and everything in, his, in its place. Now, this is so important for the student going back to school who is possibly living on their own for the first time. They're going to have a lot of um, late nights, a lot of all-nighters, a lot of things on their mind. And the last thing that you want for this student is in the morning is to be rummaging around. Where did I leave my keys? Where did I put my toilet bag? Where did I put my binder? Uh, so this is why I say organization is actually more important than the aesthetic of the dorm room or the um, student's first place. Because it doesn't matter how good a place looks. If it doesn't function well, you're not going to be happy there. And in the case of the student, you're not going to be productive there. So now furthering our conversation on um, storage, we get into dressers and nightstands. So again, I, I really feel the Calyx system does a multitude of um, services. But if you want to go with a traditional nightstand, then check your room size and see if you can use a dresser. Typically the Malm works great here. Again, inexpensive um, and I like the small size of it. And it's great to use as a nightstand while giving the student additional storage for clothes. The next consideration is what to do with the window if there are no treatments on the existing windows. So I'm going to leave a link to a blackout temporary blind that I thought was actually very aesthetically pleasing. This is fabulous because you don't have to drill into anything. It can easily be cut to size and it just velcros to your window. Now, Two camps here. There are those that love blackout and feel that they cannot sleep without it. And then I believe that we should allow our bodies to attune to the um, natural circadian rhythm of waking up with the light and going to sleep um, with natural darkness. Um, so whatever way you choose, there are temporary lights that you can utilize or temporary blinds rather that you can utilize um, to get some privacy as well as light control on your windows. The next consideration would be underfoot. Now, if you're going into a space that's perhaps a rental that has existing carpeting, um, I would suggest you spend a little bit of money and have those carpets cleaned. Um, if the place has wood floors 
or you can't for some reason clean that carpeting, consider laying a area rug over top. It's a, it gives you some warmth to step down to on cold winter mornings, uh, makes it a little bit more comfortable to walk around the room. And then from a, an aesthetic point of view, it really does make the room feel more homey. Again, there are some fabulous um, carpets that are outdoor that you might want to consider bringing in. Again, mishaps are going to happen. If it's not an outdoor carpet, then at least find one that, are, that is washable. So many of those, I'll link, leave a link to some of my favorites below. And finally, the last consideration for our dorm room is artwork and or pictures. So many different uh, inexpensive ways to get artwork up on those walls and consider using the uh, 3M temporary um, picture holders so that you don't have to worry about putting holes in the walls. Although once we put up all those lack shelves and whatnot, we're going to have holes to deal with. And speaking of that, so how I dealt with that is I actually went to the um, landlord and asked him if it was okay to do that as long as we promised to patch up those holes when we left and then uh, put some touch-up paint over top of them. And most landlords are good with that. But this is really an area where the student now gets to bring in their personality um, and gets to bring a little bit of home to their dorm. Um, so I would allow them to really choose that and, you know, kind of like go to town on what they want to bring in and hang on the walls. Uh, again, if you've got the mom dresser or if you've got those lack shelves, you can always um, lean things as opposed to hanging them. But this is a great way to bring some personality into the room now and have fun. And then some throw pillows. And one of the things I would caution you with when you're selecting items for this dorm room is try to buy the best quality you can and avoid buying things that are dorm room like or that are sort of temporary um, because that's what's going to want make you want to spend less is if you go into this with that mindset that everything is temporary. If you can buy things that you know that eventually can come back to your home or be utilized in that student's first apartment as an adult, you're more likely to make good choices um, and then keep within your budget but in a way that is more realistic like I said because you're not thinking of it as a temporary solution. So my boys have all graduated. This is my first year of not dealing with back to school. I am feeling a little bit nostalgic and I'm feeling very excited for those of you who are heading into it um, your first year. Um, and for those parents who I know it's, it's a, a little bit bittersweet for you, um, it's a year of adjustments for both the parent and the student, but it's such an exciting time for the student. I wish you all great success and we will see you next time.